Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Benton. For those of you that don't know me, I was a police officer for 10 years. And it's been about two weeks since I did a video on GTA 6. I'm starting to shake a little bit. So I think we're due for another one here. Now, before anyone gets offended, this is satirical. Please do not really go out there and commit crimes. I'm gonna look at the GTA 6 trailer and tell you how these criminals could have done their jobs a little bit better. Let's do it. You ever wonder how you would escape prison if you ended up there? Well, in 10 years, I only saw two people escape police custody and they both got caught within like three days. Their methods weren't perfect, but we can learn from them. I'm not gonna talk about the guy that hid in the prison trash can, jumped the fence and ripped open his nutsack. We already covered that in my first GTA 6 video. I'm gonna talk about the guy that faked a heart attack. Now, if you're in jail and you have some kind of illness, they can usually treat it there. But the ghetto ass people cages in the United States generally don't have MRI machines. So if you fake some kind of like soft tissue issue, they're probably gonna have to transport you to the hospital. The problem is you're gonna be wearing leg shackles. This guy was in jail for robbery. He faked a heart attack, so they took him to the hospital. The doctors ordered this guy to get an MRI. You can't go into an MRI machine wearing metal leg shackles. So they took him off. Guess what this guy did? Boom, he was out the door. The officer who had been with him immediately put the description out of the radio and we started looking for him. This guy lucked out though. He jumped the fence and ended up on a construction vehicle lot. This area was fenced in, so they left the keys in the ignition and the cars unlocked. This guy stole a truck with a trailer attached and a skid loader and a mini excavator on the back. He accelerated and ran right through the gate, got on the road and headed south, but not south enough. The thing about escaping is, once you escape, you haven't really escaped yet. If you're gonna do this, this is a lifelong commitment. Sometimes it's gonna be worth it, sometimes it's not. This guy went to see his girlfriend. Oh, there's three billion women in the world, and there's only one that the cops expect you to go see. Two if you're a real mama's boy. That's how they caught him. So if you're trying to break out of prison, come up with some medical bullshit. I'm not a doctor, but just make sure that you're getting an MRI, whatever it is. And once you escape, it's time to flee to Mexico. The good thing about this is it's easy. To cross the border from Mexico into US, you need a passport, paperwork, a visa, you gotta pay a fee, it's a big deal. But to go from US into Mexico, they don't even check your driver's license. You pay them literally like 50 cents and you walk across, that's it. Inventa un nuevo nombre, encuéntrate una mamacita bonita y vive tu vida, pero nunca jamás vuelvas a los Estados Unidos. Lucia, do you know why you're here? Bad luck, I guess. Ooh, this pains me to see. If you get arrested, I'm all about lawyering up and trying to get out of it and not pleading guilty, all that stuff. But at this point, it's too late, Lucia. You're already in jail. The gig's up. Guys, this is the difference between your average dirtbag criminals and the greats, the legends, the ability to manipulate people in positions of authority. Don't take lessons from Lucia here. This isn't how it's done. Once you're found guilty, there's only one thing that anybody wants to hear. This includes the social worker that Lucia's talking to, the judge, anybody. How guilty and sorry and remorseful you are. Nobody does this, but I guarantee you, if you emphatically admit that you were wrong and that you harmed people and that you're very sorry, people in positions of authority are going to be shocked and they will be more lenient with you. Now, of course, this is only gonna work once with each person, but in our criminal justice system, you're very unlikely to encounter the same person more than one time. Really ham it up, have fun with it. Tears, <laughs> sadness, remorse. That's what you gotta do in this situation. You gotta become a professional actor. I've seen this trailer three times. I already know this is Miami, Florida. If you're gonna be a professional criminal, I would highly recommend doing so in a blue or democratic state. I'm not saying you should be a Democrat or Republican. Red states are much tougher on crime. It is what it is. Thankfully, you can just avoid this. I recommend somewhere like New York or California. Maryland wasn't bad either. You really have to kill somebody or get busted like seven times for the same thing to go to jail. These are the states you want to be in. There was a girl in hell. She said she cared about me. 
Okay, vehicles. This is super important. If you're going to be a criminal, you do not want to stand out. No flashy vehicles. Nothing like this here. Avoid these. Criminals just didn't seem to understand this. They always wanted to jack their cars up, put big fancy rims on them, spoilers, tinted windows, that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Gus Fring did a really good job driving a Volvo in Breaking Bad, but I think we can take this one step further. I recommend the Ford F-150, not because it's a good vehicle or because it's useful. In fact, it's probably very impractical and unsafe for the general population. Trucks in the United States are really only popular because of marketing and the fact that they're able to skirt cafe standards and upsell you a bigger vehicle than you need. However, the Ford F-150 has been the number one selling vehicle in the United States for 42 years straight. There's no better way to blend in in the U.S. than driving a truck. Plus, cops love trucks. This is going to create an unconscious sense of solidarity between you and the police officers. People like people like themselves. Drive a truck, build rapport with the police, and blend in. Also, make sure that your vehicle is legally registered. Make sure that the headlights and the taillights are working. None of this bullshit. Some of the worst criminals throughout history were caught because of traffic stops. She tried to, make my to all my lovely ladies out there doing this kind of work, I sincerely appreciate you. No judgment here. And I'm really sorry for the bad relationship you had with your father. But I do have a piece of advice for you. Plan for the future. If you're a stripper, there's no 401k, there's no pension, there's no 457b. You're going to have to save your own money. If you're a good stripper, you should make a lot of money, so that won't be a problem. Don't spend all your money on Gucci purses and Chick-fil-A. Get a Roth IRA, max it out every year. Being a stripper is cool for a little bit, but you certainly don't want to do it forever. In order to find fulfillment and satisfaction in life, every single woman needs to find a husband and have children. I'm all about taking care of your car, but if you're planning on having your girlfriend do this, I recommend skipping the wax detail that day. Cool. I think in some places you can actually get a permit for this beforehand. It's always better to do things the legal way, if you can. When committing a crime, there is always strength in numbers. Running from the cops is kind of like running from a bear. You don't actually have to outrun the bear. You just can't be the slowest one. All right, these cops going in here are serving some kind of warrant. If you ever find yourself in a position that looks like this, do not fight with the police. You're not going to win like that. If you can't make it out the back window, it's time to surrender, shut the f up, and lawyer up. Oh. Running from the police on foot. Do I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. But only sometimes. I've actually created a diagram for you here to help you decide. Go ahead, pause the video, take a screenshot of this so you can refer back to it for later use. Believe it or not, in a lot of states, like Maryland, it's not even a crime to run from police on foot. You got nothing to lose. And it's hella fun. So why not? I do respect the fact that this guy isn't wearing baggy clothes or Timberland boots. However, if you are overweight, this is always a terrible idea. If he would have looked at my chart, he would have known this. If you're planning on indecently exposing yourself in Florida, make sure you have enough sunscreen. Well. She's got a couple hammers here. She could probably do better. Rather arbitrarily, some weapons are perceived as more deadly than others. I would recommend a baseball bat in this scenario. You can find one at a yard sale for a couple bucks. Nobody really takes them seriously. For example, if you brandish a knife at somebody, you could get charged with a felony. If you simply hold up a baseball bat, that's probably not going to happen. Even though the baseball bat is much more deadly in hand-to-hand -hand combat than a knife. I would take a baseball bat in a fight over a knife any day. More damage, less criminal penalty. Look who's back. That's cool. This guy just broke a table. This kind of stuff is normal behavior for developing males. These acts of heroism that prove themselves as men. As a personal example, I ate a dead mouse in high school and drank a pound of bacon grease in the police academy. Yes, I think somebody gave me $20 for each one of these, but it was never really about the money. 
For this gentleman here to get the maximum effect out of his buffoonery, I would recommend using some Everclear and lighting the table on fire. The only way we're gonna get through. They're still wearing the same outfits they had on in the robbery. This is a problem because the police are gonna go straight to the scene of the robbery. And what's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna get a suspect description. And the store owner is gonna say, Oh, I remember exactly what she looked like. She had on a red bandana and a pair of Daisy Duke shorts. I believe that I saw her tummy exposed and she was wearing Converse shoes. And she had a very juicy booty that I would like to touch. So if the cops catch her here, she's done. Dead to rights. Wear something over top of your clothes. And when you're done, put it in a bag, tie it up, throw it out the window. Is it perfect? No, but it's better than this. Yeah, they're probably going to find the bag of clothes, but they don't know what you're wearing now. And it's not going to be any good for evidence because DNA stuff isn't really that developed yet. Just don't spit, bleed, or ejaculate onto the clothes before you throw them away. This. Don't drive like an idiot. Cops probably aren't going to chase you for something small like this. We caught a ton of people like this because they would drive like idiots and wreck their cars. I know this seems counterintuitive, but as a criminal, you should avoid tattoos in general. Their specificity can only serve to identify you. Plus, even in 2024, they do carry a bit of a criminal stigma. Definitely avoid face tattoos. According to the American Psychological Association, defendants with facial tattoos are more likely to be found guilty and receive sentences twice as long as defendants without facial tattoos. That's worse than being a minority. By sticking together. These guys had the right idea. It's nearly impossible to catch somebody on dirt bike without using the shotgun. Being a team. You want to be dressed up to the point that people can't even tell what race or gender you are. And for God's sake, put on some rubber gloves. But I also recommend sunglasses and a hat. <laughs> Crimes like anything else, you got to have a little fun with it. Trust. Trust. I would never recommend somebody do a robbery. There's always better crimes to commit out there. But if you absolutely have to, don't do it like this. Park your car across the street. Because like I said, the first thing the cops are going to do, show up, get a suspect description. Then they're going to ask, what was the mode of transportation? How did the suspect leave the scene? If the store owner knows what car you were driving, then the police are going to know exactly what car to look for. This is bad, for you at least. If the store owner doesn't know, they're going to check the cameras in the building. If the cameras only show you walking off on foot, they'll have to go across the street to check another camera. A lot of times those businesses are shut down or the cameras aren't working and it's just going to cause a giant hassle for the police and it's going to buy you another five or 10 minutes during your getaway. This time is crucial. It's very unlikely they're going to catch you if they don't know what car they're going to be looking for. Also, look at this. They left their car door open. I'll bet you they left it running too. Just because you're a criminal doesn't mean you're immune to crime. Do they really think they're the only criminals in Miami? These old cars are extremely easy to steal. All you have to do is pop the ignition, start it up with a screwdriver. Lock your car doors. Imagine this. You rob a store, you run outside, and you find out that somebody stole your car. How stupid would you feel? Don't let this be you. And not to mention, this is illegal. Cops can give you a ticket for leaving your car unattended and running. If I were dispatched to this scene, I would have arrested Jason. Then I would beat the shit out of him and plant drugs on him. And lastly, I would write him a ticket for leaving his car unattended and running. And Lucia? Well, I would release her without charge. On one condition. Hi, Bobby. A sincere thank you for anyone that watched this video. I hope that you got something out of this. I'm Sam Benton, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.